This is Mrs. Bishop's social emotional lesson asking for help. Okay, the lesson expectations are a little bit different than other lessons. First of all, remove distractions that could keep you from watching and listening to the video. Have a paper and pencil to take notes if you want. But there is no assignment at the end. Instead, you will be playing a game and asked to participate in that game. The goal of the lesson is for you to learn the importance of asking for help and being willing to do it. There's lots of kinds of help uh, in this world, but we're only going to focus on two types in this lesson. The first one is school help. Asking your teacher or asking a peer to help you with an assignment. The other kind of help is emotional help, where you would probably talk to your staff or a counselor or psychologist uh, on how to solve a problem. I'd like you to watch the video in the next slide, which focuses on the importance of asking others for help. Hey everybody, Michael Gebbin here, and it's Wednesday again, and I'm super excited to be with you guys. So um, this topic today is one I'm really passionate about. Unlike last week's video, where I'm still kind of struggling with the idea of these difficult conversations, this ties in, but one I'm really comfortable with, and that's to ask for help. So my question for you guys is, how many of you guys love helping others? How many of you guys just light up to help somebody else? A lot of your hands probably went up, a lot of you probably said yes, uh, but how many of you like asking for help or feel comfortable accepting help? Well, for me, I truly would not be where I am today if I didn't have the help of others in so many ways, from my parents to friends to people I really didn't even know who came up and came out of nowhere and helped me out when I needed it most. But most of all, I wasn't afraid to ask for it. When I needed something in life or I wanted to go somewhere or I wanted to achieve something, I realized I need the support of others in whatever way that that may be. But I couldn't be afraid to ask. So many of you are afraid to ask for help and afraid to accept help. When somebody wants to help you, even if you didn't ask, you're afraid to accept it. And that's stupid. I want you guys to get over that. That pride, that stubbornness, whatever it is. Nothing irritates me more than when, you know, somebody is at the grocery store and they want to run around for two hours trying to find what they're looking for when there's somebody right here that you can say, hey, where's the quinoa? And then they'll tell you where it is. And then you'll find it. And then you move on. You don't waste that time. And that can apply to school. There's somebody who's smarter than you or whatever that you can ask them to help them out with your homework or at a job, whatever it is, ask for help. Don't be afraid of it. Don't have this pride hold you back, this stubbornness hold you back from letting others help you or for asking for help. That ties into my shirt here. People need other people. From a nonprofit organization called To Write Love on Our Arms. Now they're a nonprofit that is um, specializes in helping people with um, depression, addiction, suicide. Now these things, they're not so good. And there's a lot of people who die every year because of suicide because they're afraid to ask someone for help. And I want you guys to think about that. I feel that so many people, even when I tell them to reach out to me, they're still afraid. They still won't reach out. Even when I say, don't be afraid of me, I'm easy going and I want to help. They're still afraid. So I want you guys to stop being afraid. For me personally, if you reach out to me, 
I may not have all the answers. I can guarantee I don't have all the answers, but I've connected with a lot of people and I can guarantee you one thing, I will do my best to help find you the person who is the right fit for you, who can help you out. And like this organization, they'll help you with one of the above things that I just mentioned. Um, and actually, depression is one thing that I struggled with. You think I'm Mr. Happy all the time? Well, no, we're all normal. We're all humans. I'm human. If somebody acts like they never have any problems, they're lying to you. So for me, um, back a few years ago, that was something that I really struggled with. Uh, and I tried to keep it all inside. I never talked to anybody about it. I just tried to put on this facade and act like I was happy. But in reality, I was not happy. And I was really depressed. And I was really stressed out. And I was really afraid. Um, and it wasn't until I opened up and I asked for help and I talked to somebody and it made all the difference in the world. So for each one of you, I want you to just ask and don't be afraid. Um, one final story for you guys. Um, there's a guy named Nick Vogacek. I think that's how you say it. He's a, he's a motivational speaker with no arms, and no legs. And some of you think you've got it tough. How about, uh, you know, being born with no arms and no legs. Um, that's pretty tough. But this guy didn't give up. And he motivates people all over the world to never give up. Now, the story is he was called into this girl who, who uh, was anorexic and she was about to die, wasn't eating, and he went in there and she said, why should I live? What reason is there to live? And he said, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about starting your road to recovery today three years from now, coming back to this same hospital and walking into a room to a girl who's in the same situation that you're in and helping her and help save her life because you, you'd been there, you've done that and you overcame it. She just started, she started crying because she realized that, oh my gosh, I could save a life. And that's the challenge for each and every one of you. You have the ability to save someone's life, to help someone, to change their life, to, to give to others, to accept from others you got to get over it. This idea that you don't want to ask anybody for help to be afraid. People want to help you. People want to see you succeed. So in that situation, you know, he tells her that nobody is better suited to help someone with anorexia than someone who's been through it. I have a good buddy, Josh Shipp. He's an amazing motivational speaker and he was a foster kid. Who better to help foster kids than somebody who was one? So each one of you, you're struggling with something. You're in pain. The bottom line is you're not alone. There's somebody out there just like you, but you can overcome it and you can help somebody in the same situation. Because how awesome is it to be able to talk to somebody who's been in that same situation and learn from them? So go out there, help somebody, ask for help, accept help. Thank you guys so much for all the amazing feedback. I actually hit 500 subscribers this week, which is super awesome, super pumped about that. And uh, I just, I couldn't be here without you guys. And I, I appreciate all the amazing feedback that you guys are giving me. If you guys like these videos, be sure to give them a thumbs up and you know, be sure to share them. Um, that helps spread the word and helps us together uh, positively impact tons of lives. And be sure to subscribe because every Wednesday, I'm bringing you a new video to inspire you to believe that truly anything it's possible. Rock and roll, guys. We'll see ya. Thank you. Pouty! <laughs> ask yourself the question, why ask for help? You, the better question might be, why not? There's an old saying that two heads are better than one. We weren't meant to be hermits and live in isolation. We don't have to try to solve everything by ourselves. People generally want to help others. That's why we have parents, staff, teachers, counselors, and peers. Remember, it's not a sign of weakness to ask for help. Please do not be afraid. It's a skill of strength. There is help all around us. At Echo Glen, there's staff, teachers, counselors, peers, and your family. Remember, we all need support of others. We all need help from others. <clears throat> so don't be afraid to ask or afraid to accept help. Another reason to get help from someone is that possibly then you will be able to go out and help others. <clears throat> if you had the problem and you worked through it, you will have some, can give some advice to uh, others.
who have the same problem. Okay, in this lesson, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to play a game. It's called Trivial Pursuit, and here are the directions. I would like the staff to divide the group in half however they want to. If there is more than one person watching the video. Then staff picks which group is going to answer the questions in the following slides. First, each group takes turns answering the trivial questions and everyone in the group helping each other. One person in the group is the spokesperson and answers for the group. Keep track of points earned for each group for each question answered correctly. Here are the list of trivial questions. Pause the tape so you can look at the questions as you play the game. The first question, who is Mickey Mouse's girlfriend? One group will answer. If they don't answer correctly, it can go to the other group. If they answer correctly, then the next group does question number two. Whose nose grew longer every time he lied? Number three, if you freeze water, what do you get? Alternating groups. One group gives an answer, then the next group gives an answer. Number four, what colors are the stars on the American flag? Five, where does the President of the United States live while in office? Six, which ocean is off the Washington coast? Seven, which state is famous for Hollywood? Eight, what do caterpillars turn into? Nine, what is a doe, D-O-E? Ten, how many days are in a year? Leave the screen up as you play the game. When you've answered all these questions, then go on to the next slide. All right, here is the second set of questions. I will read them all, and then at the end, after number 20, pause the tape so you can see them in order to play the game. Number 11, in the nursery rhyme, who sat on a wall before having a great fall? Number 12, how many sides does a triangle have? 13, which animal is the tallest in the world? 14, what movie is Princess Fiona from? 15, what's the response to see you later, alligator? 16, what is the name of the fairy in Peter Pan? 17, what is the name of molten rock after a volcanic eruption? 18, the Statue of Liberty came from which country to the United States? And 19, which famous ocean liner sank on her first voyage in 1912? 20, what state was a 50th state to join the Union? You may pause the tape now as you answer uh, each of the questions, each team taking turns. Keep track of what team answers what question correctly. Okay, see if you got your answers correctly. Number one, Mickey Mouse's girlfriend is Minnie Mouse. The boy whose nose grew when he lied was Pinocchio. When you freeze water, it becomes ice. The stars and the flag are white. And the president lives in the White House during his term. Number six, the Pacific Ocean is on the West Coast. Number seven, Hollywood is located in the state of California. Number eight, caterpillars turn into butterflies. Number nine, a doe, spelled D-O-E, is a female deer. And the last question is there are 365 days in a year. Let's go to the next slide for the answers for 11 through 20.
Okay, the nursery rhyme, who sat on a wall and had a great fall, was Humpty Dumpty. Number 12, there are three sides to a triangle. Number 13, the tallest animal is a giraffe. Number 14, Princess Fiona was in the movie Shrek. Number 15, this is what you say when, see you later, alligator. And you say, after a while, crocodile. Number 16, Peter Pan's fairy was Tinkerbell. Number 17, lava is what erupts from a volcano. Number 18, France gave us the Statue of Liberty. 19, the famous Titanic sunk on its maiden voyage in 1912. And the 50th state of the Union is Hawaii. All right, hopefully both teams did well because you helped each other. There is an old saying, two heads are better than one. And that's the main reason why it's good to ask for help.